All right, so this week's video is on the top 10 myths and misconceptions about quality bass. Now, this is based on a lot of comments I get, and people make certain assumptions, and I'm always having to go through and explain it, and I figure, why not make a video where I can just <laughs> send people so they can, you know, watch this video and see what my myths and misconceptions are. Uh, because people always make these assumptions. Um, so, number 10 is that it's too loud and too boomy. And I understand the reasoning. I've got huge subwoofers here. They must be too loud. They must be too boomy. Uh, but really done right, it should just be appropriate uh, and not too loud. I don't, you know, whether I'm listening to a 500 watt sub or a 1500 watt sub, I don't listen to them any louder based on their wattage, uh, which is kind of an interesting thing to go into. But um, I listen to where the, the bass is appropriate, not overdone. And so that's something that I'm big on. I don't just like to make the house rattle. I can. <laughs> certainly can, but it's it's the quality of the depth in the bass that I'm interested in. And to me, boomy equals peaky. Uh, you know, so if you if you have a single subwoofer, you're going to get the standing wave, and as you walk around the room, you're going to get loud spots and dead spots. And so if you're in a loud spot, yeah, it's going to be peaky at that particular frequency, and that can be boomy. That's what I think of when I think of boomy. Uh, and dual subs really help with that. And so, and I think they should be matched. I think they should be identical models. Um, and that way they're putting out the same. I've tried mixing different subs and haven't had near the luck I get that when, I, when the subs are perfectly matched. Um, so that's number 10. Number nine, uh, bass hurts your ears. Okay, now certainly it can. I've, you know, when I first started measuring subs, I measured the uh, SVS PB1000. Uh, it's a 10 inch driver, smallest sub on the list, most affordable sub on the list. Uh, but, you know, measuring dual subs in that scenario was enough to actually cause hearing damage because I had it turned up way too high. I was reading the software wrong and had it way too loud and my ears weren't right for about two weeks. Um, that aside, uh, that's not the normal operating scenario. I, I find it very comfortable. I have kind of tender ears. So when I go to a concert or something, I wear earplugs. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm that guy. Uh, <laughs> I, my ears are tender, so it doesn't take much to, to hurt them. So uh, I'm kind of like a canary in the coal mine in that fashion. Uh, but I also personally like ported subs. I find them more comfortable on my ears than sealed subs, which is kind of unfortunate given the channel I run. <laughs> but, um, you know, and peaky subs can certainly be more uncomfortable to listen to. And as those are subs that are loud at certain frequencies and quiet at others. Um, but all the subs I talk about that are on the list are, are subs that I consider all day subwoofers. So I can listen to them all day. They're not gonna hurt my ears. I'm not causing any hearing damage. I'm well below the, the limits. Um, you know, a hair dryer and a mower would certainly be more damaging to my ears than these subs are at the levels I listen. Uh, so I find them very comfortable. Uh, but that brings me to number eight. And number eight is bass must hurt the dog's ears. Um, and again, it, they are more in danger of ear hearing damage from uh, the mower or a hair dryer. So, uh, you know, I've actually listened and put a mic on my room while I'm, while I'm watching movies that have a lot of bass and a lot of stuff. And rarely do, does the SPL in the room go over 95 decibels. Rarely. Most of the time it's under, well under 90. And if you look at uh, you know charts showing where hearing damage occurs, it's well in the safe zone. Uh, on top of that, they can walk around in the room. Uh, they're, you know, it's funny because when I put on a movie, the dogs come in and lay down in the living room. We're all kind of settled down, and we all just spend time together watching a movie. Uh, it doesn't bother them. Now there is a caveat to that. When I did uh, review sealed subs, Angel would twitch her ears when bass was playing, and I also got uncomfortable. And so I think, uh, you know, ported subs are generally more comfortable for pets and things like that than, um, you know, a sealed sub. And again, sealed subs have a lot of benefits and stuff like that. I'm not down on them. It's unfortunate that I have a hard time with them. Um, but anyway, yeah, as far as the dogs go, uh, they're allowed to move around in the, in the house. They've got other beds. I've actually, um, we're cleaning the beds. That's why I don't have them out here. But uh, so they're laying in other parts of the room right now. But um, yeah, they, they have free reign. It just doesn't seem to bother them. And I've had people over and watching stuff and 
you know, the dogs will be in the room laying down sleeping and they're like, oh my gosh, your dogs just really aren't phased by this, are they? And it is kind of funny. Uh, granted, you know, given what you're hearing, uh, they, ju they just aren't bothered. Um, and trust me, their ears are still quite good. <laughs> They can hear things quite well. Um, all right, so moving on to number seven. Max SPL is the most important thing ever. Um, I totally disagree with this. Uh, I think flatness is much more important because you can get a sub that's really loud at say 70, 80 hertz, which big deal, any sub can do that. But down at depth, there's nothing at all. Down at 25, 30 hertz, there's nothing. So I, I think it's, it's a metric to look at. I think it's something to understand. Um, but in, it's not gonna be the decision maker as far as I'm concerned when I'm looking at subs. I look more at the flatness of the curve. Uh, I look at you know, uh, the, the, the distortion and all that stuff at the lower frequencies because at the higher frequencies, that's the easy stuff. That's the cakewalk. It's what does it do when it's deep? How does it respond when it gets real? That's the important part, and that's one of the things I consider. Um, yeah, SVS is, is well known for flatness, which is why I wanted to be their first affiliate. Uh, their subs kind of embodied the very thing I've been talking about from the beginning, long before I ever got in touch with them. So uh, I'm just excited that they liked what I was doing. So, uh, but they are well known for having very flat response in their subwoofers. When I talk about base window, this is what I'm talking about. Now this is a subwoofer that is a good, strong, powerful subwoofer with a max SPL. But as you can see, it gets a little quieter as it goes deeper. It's not as bad as a typical sub, but it's still, it's noticeable when you're listening to it. Now here is another sub that has a flatter in-room response. And this is good, but still, I don't know, it's not quite the depth that I usually look for in a subwoofer. It's respectable for sure, but just not as deep as I prefer personally like. Now, this is a subwoofer I really like, and this sub gets louder as it goes deeper. Uh, it's plenty powerful, and it has a lower max SPL than the two previous subs I just showed you. Okay, now this here is a sub that gets much quieter as it goes deeper and definitely a sub that I really would not recommend. Uh, it's a typical subwoofer. It's peaky, so as you turn it up, uh, it doesn't match with the rest of it. And it just, I don't know, this is the main problem I talk about when I talk about typical subs. And here you can see all three subwoofers together that are actually respectable. And even though the green line sub uh, has the lower max SPL uh, and it's a less expensive subwoofer, I prefer the output because it gives me the biggest base window. All these subs are integrated at the same point around the crossover, but yet uh, the green sub has just much more depth and gives you more base overall versus the other two subs all of your bass is going to occur under those lines. It won't go higher. And that's the whole idea when I talk about the bass window and when I talk about, uh, you know, the relative depth or the depth of presentation, it's that depth in the line that goes louder as it goes deeper. It gives you the capability to go deeper than, uh, say, the red line sub or the uh, blue line sub. So that's what I'm talking about when I talk about the bass window. All right, number six, uh, it's not important to run duals. Uh, see my video on that, I, I think it is important. I've, I beat it to death, honestly, on this channel. And still people ask me, well, should I get this big sub or this smaller sub? It really, I, I've compared the big sub to the small sub several times on this channel. Duals always sound better than the larger single sub, so long as the, they're from the list and they're good quality subs to begin with. Uh, I, I, am, I put myself in this category. When I first got into this, I thought, I'm just gonna get the biggest, baddest possible sub that I can afford, and it'll, it should do everything. And that was before I understood the, the effect of the standing wave, and the standing wave is where you walk around the room with a single sub playing, and it gets louder and quieter as you change positions in the room. With dual subs, it resolves a lot of that. So uh, you can check out my video on that, but uh, dual subs are very important. Uh, number five, deep bass is not good for music. Oh, I like lose my mind on this one. Music is my favorite part of this whole thing. Uh, I watch movies kind of just to stay 
in touch with my, my audience. It's not my main reason for doing all this. Uh, I really prefer the music aspects more so than the movie. The movie is just like bonus, and they, they sound great with movies. But it's the music that I like. Um, you know, if, if I, I talk about the bass window, and the more you open your bass window, the more it allows you to hear all of the music, okay? If the content is deep, so if the music itself is deep, then you'll have confident reproduction of that bass. If the content's shallow, there will be no change. So if you're listening to something that doesn't have a lot of bass, it's not gonna all of a sudden become bassy. Um, it's just not going, the subs just aren't gonna operate in that range. Uh, when I talk about the bass window, I talk about, you know, what your subs are capable of doing, and then the content determines what the subs will actually do. So, uh, you know, it, it's one of those things people assume, oh, well, this is gonna make all my music too bassy. No, no, your music, if you like it and it's bassy, the music's bassy to begin with. Uh, the subs just allow you to hear that bass. Uh, so that's one of those misconceptions that kind of drives me nuts. I really love them for the music. Um, it, it's just, it's my favorite part. Number four, ported subs are sloppy. Now. This is something where I, I understand why people say it. I understand why people think it. Um, it's true, generally, for a lot of subs that are not on the list. The subwoofers on the list are not sloppy. Uh, I would not put a sloppy subwoofer on the list. Uh, no way. I, I don't like sloppy subs. They drive me nuts. I, I don't like them. Uh, and it's, it's true of typical ported subwoofers because they're not designed to go down to the depths and that's when they really start getting sloppy. Most subs can do great around you know, 50 to 70 hertz, that's no problem. It's when it goes deeper that you get some of that slop. And it's really an issue where subs just weren't designed to go down that low, right? Um, but none of the subwoofers on the list are sloppy. And, and you know, I should point out too that any subwoofer, ported or not, will start to fall apart when you push it to its very limits. Uh, and with a ported sub, you will get more issues when you reach those limits. So if you're running a sub at 100%, uh, right up against its limits, it's gonna start complaining. And that's true of a sealed sub as well. Uh, but it's just one of those things where it's where those limits are. You know, it's, it's when does it start to do that? And for the subs on the list, that doesn't start to happen until your ears are bleeding, okay? Um, it's really, you know, it's, it's at the higher end of the limit, uh, whereas most subs, I mean, just in quiet listening, they'll start fluttering and, and you know, just doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, the subwoofers on the list are designed to go that low, so it's much less of an issue. Um, number three, good bass is only for home theater. Uh, you know, people will say, oh yeah, deep subs are great. They're great for dinosaurs and robots. <laughs> uh, you know, I get where they're coming from, but again, I guess this goes into my previous thing where it's not good for music. I love what these subs do for music. Uh, it's pretty much when you get deep subs that perform well, they're good for pretty much any content you put through them. If there's not supposed to be any bass there, there won't be. If there's supposed to be a ton of bass in there, it'll just be more composed and more confident and when it's reproducing the, that sound. So, you know, I don't think that they're just for home theater. I think they sound great with pretty much anything I listen to. Uh, so, you know, that's a common misconception. And I've, you know, I used, my parents had this old eight track tape player in their car listening to music like Oak Ridge Boys and Anne Murray and all this stuff. And I gotta tell you, when I heard some of that stuff recently on this system, it sounded amazing. Uh, much different than I remember hearing it. And it was because of the bass. Because it came in and these, these you know, bass lines and things like that just came through a lot better and really gave me a different appreciation for that music. And so, you know, and for, uh, you know, West Coast rap and things like that is really impressive. Uh, but it's, you know, it, it, it runs the gamut. Pretty much whatever you put through them, they're gonna sound great. Uh, which I think is a, a sign of a good setup. Um, number two, dual subwoofers are only for audiophiles. Uh, you know, people will think, well, yeah, no, it's great if you've got a $25,000 setup, but I, you know, that's not me. Um, you know, people think, yeah, well, it's only for people that have unlimited budgets and things like that. I, I'm not saying, hey, you need to 
go out and spend twice as much as you normally would. I'm saying hey, split your budget, you know? Uh, and, and again, I fall in this category. I went and bought the biggest, baddest possible subwoofer I could afford. Problem with that is that when you realize you need duals, if you went out and you bought the biggest, baddest subwoofer you can afford, then that means you need to go out and double that. So if you said, okay, I'm gonna go out and buy a thousand dollar subwoofer instead of two $500 subs, well, to do it right, you're gonna spend another thousand dollars. So it kind of puts you in a, in a, in a little trap there. Uh, that's why I recommend splitting your budget to begin with and running dual match subs, you know, subs of the same model and stuff uh, from the get-go because you're gonna have the right base from the get-go. So that's kind of where I'm at. You know, people assume that, well, you know, this is only for people that run, you know, thousand dollar speaker cables and all kinds of nonsense like that. This is real. This is important. Um, it, it, if you like better sound, <laughs> you will appreciate dual subwoofers. Uh, if sounds not important to you, then whatever. Why are you watching this channel? Um, but if you like better sound, dual subs are going to matter. Uh, it, it really does have quite an effect on it. So, um, number one, a subwoofer is a subwoofer is a subwoofer. They're all the same. It doesn't matter. You get one brand or another, it doesn't matter. Um, I, there, I agree with part of this and I disagree with part of this. When you go under the $400 price range, they're pretty much all the same. Some might be louder, some might be quieter, but they're all gonna have about the same type of response. They might be well behaved in one area or another, but to me, they're all kind of shallow and unrefined. And it, I'm sensitive to budget. I know that budget is a real thing. A lot of people got to deal with it, and I totally get that. Uh, but sadly, good bass doesn't start to happen until you get up into the $500 or more uh, for subwoofers. Uh, it's it's. I believe me. I wish good subs were 100 bucks a piece. I really do. Uh, but they're just not there. Um, but you know, I don't know. It, bass is 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 a weird thing. And in order to do it right, uh, you know, the subwoofers on the list are all subs that I would personally spend my own money on. Uh, they're, they're subs I believe in, and, and whether I've heard them or not, they, they fit a particular uh, mold, they fit a particular requirement uh, that I think is really important. And that's, you know, they go plenty deep uh, and they do it well. So, you know, I, some people will say, well, what about this and what about that? And it kind of gets into a, you know, a vicious circle. Uh, but really, uh, the subs on the list are kind of undeniably better. Uh, they, they, they all have these ways of doing things that just make sense, and they're designed to operate at those deeper frequencies. And the results are pretty clear. Um, all right, so... A bonus, uh, and this is one I get typically from uh, sound engineers, um, people who are setting up sound for uh, you know things like stadiums, concerts, um, nightclubs, things like that. And their response is, "Deep bass sounds terrible," and <laughs> which, of course, I disagree. Um, but it's one of those things where. Most concert subs and nightclub subs and, and all these commercial subs, they're generally designed to be loud and not so much designed to be deep. And so when they try and push those subs to be deep, you know, you try and push a sub that's designed to go down to 40 hertz, uh, you try and push it down to 20 hertz, it's not going to like it. It's not going to perform well, and it's going to sound terrible. <laughs> okay? Um, but it's because of the subwoofer, not because of the actual low frequency. Right? So... That's one of those things I've, I've had that discussion on. People tell me, well, deep bass sounds terrible. I've heard it before, it sounds terrible. It's the equipment. It's straight up the equipment. Uh, it's not designed to go that low. It's not, it's not built around going that low. So when it does go that low, it's complaining, it's acting up, they're, they're not happy. Uh, and so I, I get where they're coming from. Looking through the world through their perspective, it makes sense. It makes sense that that would, you know, deep bass would sound terrible because, hey, you know, a lot of older music was, uh, you know, they had to shave off the low end response because if they put it through regular speakers, it'd blow them apart because it's too much bass, right? Uh, so it, it's this... You know, people see what they're what they're working with, and they try and put that lower frequency through, and it just doesn't do well. Whereas, if you run them through subwoofers that are built and designed to do that, 
man, the difference is amazing. So I want to thank you guys so much for subscribing and following my links in the description. Uh, YouTube actually had me to the point of calling it quits this year. <laughs> Um, they have uh, throttled back some of my best videos to like zero. Uh, videos that have been solid performers just went down to nothing. Uh, they've been demonetizing stuff. Every video I upload gets demonetized. Uh, and so it's been a really frustrating year. I've had my, my watch time just fall off for no good reason. It wasn't like I put out a, a video and people got mad and left. It just, they changed a bunch of stuff around and made it harder for me to be visible and I don't know, it's been a frustrating year, so I really appreciate the support I get from my viewers. It, it has made a huge difference. Um, I'm trying really hard to get to 5,000 subscribers by January 1st. Uh, it's a goal I set this year, and I'm, I was close. I was on pace to get to like seven or 8,000 uh, when I first started the year, but then it dropped way off. I had all those issues, and, but I'm actually really surprised that I'm close to being able to hit that 5,000 mark. So if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. It makes a huge difference for me. Uh, it looks like I am gonna hit it in 2018, so I'm really looking forward to 2018. It really opens up some doors for me as far as you know the stuff I'm able to review and things like that. Um, and I do still have a couple more videos to do uh, before next year, so uh, stay tuned for that. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing and uh, you know I've, I've already hit my 1 million views uh, for the channel so again thank you guys for that I couldn't do it without you I really appreciate it um, I am just very very appreciative so thank you so much uh, thanks for watching and please subscribe